The AMA is a very conservative, conservative uh, organisation uh, and they don't represent all GPs or all surgeons or all um, healthcare providers. Uh, uh, they're entitled to have their opinion, of course. I think it should be recognised the AMA doesn't reflect the majority of Australian doctors' opinions. That's the first thing. Well, I think the AMA represents um, a subset of doctors. They don't represent my views. I'm not a member of the AMA, and there are lots of other doctors out there who feel the same way. As I said, we're a diverse group of professionals, so um, they have their particular view. It's a safe view, but I, I think um, the vast majority of doctors, particularly those working in the field of palliative care, don't feel that way. I understand that they are a board that's very much embedded in tradition and the way that things have been, and that they are reluctant to make such a large change to the way doctors practice. However, I do think that their ideas are outdated at this point. There is, in my view, a great degree of um, ignorance amongst the medical profession about the evidence concerning the safety of voluntary euthanasia. There are also a lot of myths. Um, and my observation about the uh, level of discussion on voluntary euthanasia in this country uh, amongst doctors and politicians in the community is generally that it's at a fairly low level. The AMA should be responding to the arguments for and against voluntary euthanasia purely on, the, on scientific evidence, like we do for other medical interventions. And the evidence is in. It's been in for years. And it's very clear that voluntary euthanasia is safe and effective, as has been reported from multiple jurisdictions around the world. The AMA should be responding to that. <laughs>